Hi guys, I am Dr. Alexander Balan and would like to present you today a new lecture called Anesthesia in Cerebral Embolization of AVM or Arteriovenous Malformations. I have nothing to disclose and this uh, lecture is just for uh, informational or educational purpose. As we start uh, analyzing uh, anesthesia for any type of procedures, we have uh, pre-anesthetic, anesthetic and post-anesthetic periods and we have to conform ourselves for all of them. For pre-anesthetic preparation of the patient, we have to determine the degree of preparation of the patient for surgery. To establish the anesthetic risk according to the ASA or American Society of Anesthesiology score elaborating of the anesthesia plan and preoperative preparation and indication of premedication if it is necessary. Assessment of patient somatic risk factors like general analysis of the blood, evaluation of the patient's coagulation system like protrombin time, activated uh, partial thromboplastin time, INR and fibrinogen. Urinal urinalysis, uh, X-ray of the thorax and EKG. So these five analyses are essential for any type of uh, anesthesia that should follow. Echocardiogram and consultation of the cardiologist in case of heart fail failure, severe rhythm disorders or pronounced ischemic heart disease. And consultation of any other specialist like endocrinologist in patient with diabetes or any other related endocrinology pathologist or for any, any organ disease like uh, renal replacement therapy or uh, liver disease. Let's talk a little bit about theory related to the uh, brain and especially cerebral, cerebral uh, perfusion pressure or CPP that represent a net gradient, pressure gradient that carries oxygen and uh, nutrients to brain tissue. It is measured by difference between uh, mean blood pressure or MAP and intracranial pressure or ICP which is measured in uh, millimeters of mercury. Uh, central, uh, sorry, uh, cerebral perfusion pressure regulation is critical in the treatment of patients with intracranial pathology, including shock, hemodynamic stress or distress and traumatic uh, brain injury. Uh, cerebral perfusion pressure and cerebral blood flow will continue to remain considerably unchanged over a wider range of mean arterial pressure. So mean arterial pressure is calculated, as you know, one third of systolic blood pressure and two third of plus two thirds of diastolic blood pressure. And if you have this range from 50 to 150 millimeters of mercury, this means that cerebral perfusion pressure is uh, good for brain. And intracranial pressure is between five and 10 millimeters of mercury. So we have to make difference from mean arterial pressure to, uh, to intracranial pressure to see if uh, cerebral perfusion pressure is good for brain. In general, it is uh, from 60 to 80 millimeters of mercury normal uh, range. And if a uh, uh, value is going up or, or uh, lower, it may affect the brain, of course. So the skull represents a rigid fixed anatomical space and therefore uh, the increase, uh, the intracranial pressure will increase if the volume of, of any of the cranial component increases. And the com uh, compliance decreases respectively. Sorry, here is a mistake. It is uh, compliance. Uh, what are the components of uh, cranial components, so there are vessels, there are uh, brain tissue and of course uh, cerebrospinal fluid. Any increase of, of these components may um, increase uh, the intracranial pressure and decrease, decrease compliance. 
Uh, normally, the cerebral blood flow has a property of self-regulation. For example, in case of uh, a decrease in blood pressure, a general decrease in blood pressure, there will be a dilation of the cerebral arteries with an increase in uh, cerebral flow, and thus maintaining intracranial uh, pressure and cerebral perfusion pressure. What are the methods for evaluating cerebral perfusion? There are uh, invasive and non-invasive. The first one and the main is uh, to measure two components like mean arterial pressure and intracranial pressure. Mean arterial pressure at the same time can be measured invasively and non-invasively. Non-invasively by a cuff and invasively by cannulating any of the peripheral artery like radial or femoral that is done mostly. An insertion of intraventricular catheter, which is an invasive procedure and usually uh, choose lateral ventricle. Uh, it can, measured, can be measured also by non-invasively by Doppler uh, transcranial uh, ultrasonography or TCD, but it measures mostly uh, speed of blood flow in the middle cerebral artery. Patient uh, can come to us with uh, following symptoms and we have to detect them and interpret as something to uh, administer or to correct uh, statement of patient, like headache, convulsions, mass effect, nausea, vomiting, diplopia, and hemorrhage. So what we have to do with patient to prepare for uh, anesthesia. So stopping warfarin, so we are going to the coagulation system and stopping warfarin for five days uh, before the intervention and performing the analysis of proton beam time and INR 24 hours before the intervention. Mild uh, pre-anesthetic sedation in the evening with benzodiazepine solutions or in the early morning of the day of uh, surgery. So you can use diazepam, midazolam, uh, Per, was, per oral or uh, intravenous or intramuscular road, which, whichever you use. So also we can apply a 5% EMLA uh, ointment venous, uh, for venous catheter insertion. It is uh, 2.5 uh, lidocaine and 2.5 prelocaine component. Also, we can apply elastic bandages immediately before surgery to patient with varicose veins of the lower limbs. And of course, infusion of uh, solution of cry crystalline solution, like uh, 500 milliliters, one hour before the operation. Uh, which types of anesthesia are applied for uh, arteriovenous malformations? So only one is chosen like general anesthesia. And it, of course, it's combined with intravenous and with uh, inhaler uh, pivot like sevofluran or any other uh, uh, inhalatory anesthetic, but sevofluran is used mostly. And preferred ventilation mode can be a pressure control or a vo volume control, mostly pressure control ventilation. Reasons for applying uh, general anesthesia. So it requires motionless patient. Motionless patient is to improve image quality. And uh, muscle relaxation, beca because the uh, patient uh, movements during the procedure uh, can be dangerous and may result in a rupture and intracranial hemorrhage, uh, especially when uh, catheters and sheets are placed at uh, distal uh, or distal part of the vessel. And pain during embolization with onyx as mostly using onyx, but any other uh, component or material that is used is painful. And during anesthesia, uh, a component that is heparin is administered at a dose of 70 to 100 uh, international units per kilogram. And it is administered right after the insertion of uh, the catheter of the main catheter of uh, surgery. So it is necessary to reach ACT or activated clotting, uh, clotting time values of 200 to 250 uh, seconds. 
It is measured uh, immediately after administration of heparin, uh, two minutes uh, later, and uh, and the result we can see and reach. If you, if we want to reach these values and uh, ICT is lower, we can ad administer additional dose of heparin. And after one hour, we can measure again uh, uh, activated clotting time as heparin have a health time of one hour. And of course, preferably it's induced hypotension. Hypotension is considered uh, a blood pressure like 90, 90 uh, per 60 and less is considered uh, uh, hypotension. And maintain, of course, optimal blood flow at this hypotension and also uh, necessitate a rapid recovery of the patient. So infusion is important and at the same time, uh, decreased blood pressure to prevent any of the vascular events. What are uh, possible complications between and after the procedure and how we can uh, prevent them? So major complications you see here are counted like uh, brain stroke, intracranial hemorrhage, passage of the agent of embolization, any of them, in the draining vein, at the level of vascular access, uh, contrast-induced uh, nephropathy, and many of the minor complications like arterial spasm, post-contrast uh, encephalopathy, and ischemic transient attack. And one of the discovered and most important is cerebral hypo or hyperperfusion syndrome with uh, evident and marked edema around the, uh, around the area of embolization. How we do prevent these complications? For example, distal embolization caused by the release into the bloodstream of thrombotic, necrotic, or atherosclerotic material. We have effective heparinization during ACT uh, verification procedure adding additional dose, we're minimizing uh, aggressive manipulations with a uh, catheter. Intracranial uh, hemorrhage, once is suspected, the procedure is terminated immediately and anticoagulation is reversed with protamine sulfate. And for this, you should know the dosage like uh, one milligram protamine to 100 uh, units of heparin. For example, if you uh, detected the intracranial hemorrhage of uh, five minutes after the administration of heparin. So you have to reverse it and calculate the dose. For example, if you administered 5,000 uh, units of heparin, so you require uh, 50, uh, 50 uh, milligram of uh, protamine sulfate. If you uh, detected any of the hemorrhagic events and want to reverse, for example, after uh, one hour, you have to give 25 or a little bit more of uh, protamine sulfate. Carotid artery spasm, at, uh, it is going through the carotid artery mostly. It resolves spontaneously or any type of uh, arterial spasm uh, resolves spontaneously when catheter is removed and intra-arterial administration of 100 uh, to 400 milli mic micrograms of nitroglycerin leads to a rapid resolution of spas. Also, we can administer other drugs like papaverin, verapamil, or nematob. All of them are uh, effective. Contrast-induced nephropathy for uh, preventing uh, nephropathy from contrast, we uh, are hydrating adequately during the intervention patient and uh, current meta-analysis reported that n acetyl cysteine and theophylin are used effectively uh, in the prevention of contrast-induced nephropathy. Also, passage of the agent of the embolization in the draining vein, we have to induce hypotension like uh, blood pressure less than 90 per 60 and slow which slows uh, blood flow and ensures a more controllable storage of any type of the agent of embolization hyperventilation which is uh, used for a short time in order to redistribute blood flow 
and reduces uh, blood flow to the normal brain parenchyma while maintaining moderate blood flow to the nest of the AV malformation. As I uh, told you, it can be applied only for 30 minutes, as later it uh, makes to appearance of many changes. And cerebral hyperperfusion syndrome and post-embolization hemorrhage. Here we have a list of uh, anti-hypertensive uh, drugs that can be used. Nematop is mostly effective during the embolization as there is a massive uh, edema provoked by this uh, agent of embolization. And of course, very effective is from our experience uh, increased dosage of the sevofluran, inhal inhalatory anesthetic. Mandatory is uh, the first day postoperatively, so induced hypertension uh, for three days with any of the drugs that you can see here, antihypertensive, uh, analgesia for patient with non-steroid anti-inflammatory drugs and antibi antibiotics, only one dose or no dose at all. And in case of cerebral edema, you can give dexamethasone or any other uh, steroid for uh, one dose or a little bit more first day especially. Uh, oxygen per uh, face mask like 6 liter per minute or 3 to 4 liter per minute through the nasal cannula. Of course prophylactic gastric uh, stress ulcers with uh, H2 block blockers or uh, proton pump inhibitors. Uh, feeding of the patient after the restoration of full consciousness and the presence of peristalsis and diuretics as needed if you made a lot of infusion and uh, patient do not uh, give uh, adequate urine level. Thank you for attention. You can access links uh, where information were uh, examined and read by self. Thank you very much and great time, guys.